What is the best meal to help prevent blockages developing in your blood vessels and prevent heart attacks? In order to design the best meal, we have to look behind the scenes and figure out why these blockages or plaque develop in our blood vessels and what we can do to prevent it from happening. Plaque is made up of a combination of factors and we'll go through each one, starting with cholesterol. Now the cholesterol in our blood, it doesn't travel just as cholesterol, it's packaged up into vehicles called lipoproteins. And under certain conditions, those vehicles can enter our blood vessel walls and deposit the cholesterol. On social media, there's a lot of debate about this, but it's crucial to get right when designing the best meal. You'll hear some influences going against the preventative care clinical guidelines, saying that cholesterol levels in the blood don't matter so long as you're not insulin resistant, so long as all of your other risk factors are controlled. That is false. We've got fantastic research from the PISA study that was conducted between 2010 and 2014, involving over 4,000 people who were examined every three years, and they were trying to figure out what factors are involved in plaque development or atherosclerosis. And a standout finding is that one half of apparently healthy people with normal values for all of their risk factors still had blockages in their blood vessels developing. More importantly, even for people with optimal values for all of their risk factors, there was still a significant correlation between low-density lipoprotein cholesterol, so that's one of the vehicles that carry cholesterol around the blood, so there was a significant correlation between that LDL cholesterol and the presence of blockages or plaque developing. And we can see this quite clearly on the graph, that as our LDL cholesterol levels increase, so do do our chances of developing blockages in our blood vessels. And remember, this graph only included people with optimal values for all of their risk factors. So these people did not have diabetes, they were not insulin resistant, and they had perfect blood pressure. Yet we can still see that as their LDL cholesterol levels increase, so too do the blockages in blood vessels. This is a bit extra for experts, but online you'll often hear people saying that correlation doesn't equal causation, as in just because we can see a trend in the research doesn't mean that that specific factor is causing the disease. So taking LDL cholesterol as an example, we need a mechanism for how LDL cholesterol levels can result in blockages in our blood vessels. And it was explained beautifully by the European Atherosclerosis Society. So the LDL particles, or one of the vehicles that's carrying cholesterol around the body, it doesn't just move passively across our blood vessel walls. Instead, there are specific pathways to cross the blood vessel walls, and this process is called transcytosis. Essentially, once the concentration of LDL reaches a high enough level in our blood, it's got the chance of entering our blood vessels and depositing that cholesterol. And to emphasize, we do have strong research from the PISA study showing that this process does happen without other risk factors, so this can still happen for people that don't have diabetes or insulin resistance or any other factors. It's simply the LDL cholesterol. So we need a meal that controls our cholesterol levels in our blood. The next factors found in plaques are immune cells or macrophages. They are a type of white blood cell that engulfs and digests other cellular debris and fats, but when they consume too much cholesterol, they turn into foam cells, which are a hallmark of early plaque development. And over time, calcium can deposit into these plaques or blockages, which makes them harder and more brittle. And we can see this calcification using CT scans, which brings me on to a really important point. We can have early atherosclerosis or blockages in our blood vessels, and it doesn't show up on these CT scans. So if you do have one of these scans and your calcium result is zero, that doesn't necessarily mean that there's no blockages in your blood vessels. And this plaque is covered by a fibrous cap, a bit like a band-aid, but this cap is thin and prone to rupture, and when it ruptures, that's when heart attacks and strokes happen. Now that we understand plaque development, we need to stop it in its tracks, and there are multiple factors at play. We've already talked about one factor, which is cholesterol, but there are many other factors that we need to control, because each factor adds to one another and compounds the issue. The innermost layer of our arteries is called the endothelium and can be easily damaged by factors such as high blood pressure. This high pressure exerts extra force on our blood vessel walls, causing damage and making them more susceptible to atherosclerosis. Another common factor that injures the endothelial lining is high sugar levels. So we need a meal that doesn't contain sugar and is made up of whole foods. We want to get rid of processed foods. We also want a meal that will lower blood pressure, so one of the best ways to do this is to eat foods that are high in potassium and fiber. 
The next contributing factor that we need to address is inflammation. So generally, if people are overweight, they've got higher levels of inflammation. So we want to try and help people feel fuller for longer and overall lose weight. Now, some of the crucial ways that we can do this is advocating for a high lean protein diet. High levels of fiber also help people feel fuller for longer and overall help them to lose weight. It's a similar story for insulin resistance, which can help contribute to our overall inflammation levels. And again, we treat this by eating whole foods that are rich in fiber and protein. One example of an incredibly healthy meal to help protect your blood vessels and prevent heart disease starts with salmon. And if you wanted vegan options, you can consider temper, lentils or chickpeas. Like I mentioned earlier, protein helps us feel fuller for longer. What we're trying to do is help people reach a healthy weight. We certainly don't want to be overweight or obese, and protein can help us in that fight. Particularly when you have a look at the energy content of the different macronutrients, so proteins, carbohydrates, and fat. Protein provides roughly 4 calories per gram, but fat offers a whopping 9 calories per gram. That means if you have 100 grams of protein, you're having about 400 calories. On the flip side, if you have 100 grams of fat, you're having a whopping 900 calories. Plus, when we're helping people to lose weight, we want them to lose fat and not muscle. A higher protein intake helps ensure that you're providing your muscles with the necessary nutrients to maintain or even grow, especially when you're incorporating resistance training to your routine. If you've watched any of my previous videos, you know how much I emphasize the importance of a high protein diet. And I chose salmon as the protein source because it's rich in omega-3. Omega-3 helps to significantly reduce our triglyceride levels, and it also has anti-inflammatory actions. So remember, we're trying to address all of the different factors that lead to blockages in our blood vessels. But it's crucial to check the source of salmon. Not all salmon is created equal. Wild-caught salmon, especially from pristine waters, tend to have fewer contaminants and generally are considered a cleaner source. But on the other hand, farmed salmon can expose the salmon to pollutants and heavy metals. The next ingredient in the perfect meal is peas. Peas are a fantastic source of protein and fiber. Fiber helps to lower the levels of LDL cholesterol, so that's the one that we talked about earlier. And it does this by binding to cholesterol particles in the digestive system and moving them out of the body before they can be absorbed. And like we mentioned earlier, fiber helps people feel fuller for longer. It reduces the likelihood of overeating and subsequent weight gain. And as we know, maintaining a healthy weight is crucial for reducing the risk of cardiovascular disease. In addition, fiber helps to stabilize our blood sugar levels. And it reduces the risk of insulin resistance, which is another factor in heart disease. It also promotes a healthy gut, and there is emerging research suggesting a link between gut health and heart health. Finally, Peas are a fantastic source of potassium, and as I mentioned earlier, eating foods that are rich in potassium lowers our blood pressure. Potassium helps our kidneys get rid of excess sodium and water from the body. It reduces blood volume and blood pressure. It also helps to relax the blood vessel walls, leading to wider blood vessels and reducing blood pressure. And while potassium is crucial, there's another mineral that definitely warrants our attention, and that is magnesium. Magnesium and potassium often work hand in hand in many of the body's physiological processes. And a lack of magnesium can hinder the body's ability to properly balance potassium levels, which can in turn impact heart health. The next ingredient I would include is quinoa. Quinoa is high in protein and fiber, but it's also a rich source of magnesium. So you can see that all of the ingredients that I've mentioned so far, they're adding to one another to reduce our overall chance of developing blockages in our blood vessels. I would next add broccoli. Broccoli is another fantastic source of fiber, but it also has magnesium and, crucially, vitamin K. And the perfect meal has to include avocado. Avocado is a brilliant source of unsaturated fats, and by replacing saturated fat with unsaturated fat in our diet, we can lower our blood cholesterol levels. Furthermore, like we mentioned with omega-3, these types of fats have an anti-inflammatory effect. And to finish the meal, I would add extra virgin olive oil and lemon dressing. And if you wanted something extra, you could add walnuts or almonds. They are rich in omega-3 fatty acids, fiber, and essential vitamins. And just to keep in mind, if you're adding other sources to this meal, make sure to check the sugar and salt content, because often other sources are loaded with sugar and salt, both of which we don't want in our meal. What I've done here is design a meal that's made from whole foods, that's rich in fiber, protein, potassium, magnesium, and unsaturated fats. 
So if this meal isn't for you, that's absolutely fine. It's the concepts that are crucial, and you can take those concepts and personalize them to your tastes and preferences. And when it comes to preventing these blockages happening in our blood vessels, yes, diet and exercise always come first, but if you're still struggling with things like weight loss, we do have medication options such as the GLP-1 class of medications to help patients on their weight loss journey. It's a similar story for your blood cholesterol levels. For some patients, their liver simply produces too much cholesterol, so yes, diet and exercise are crucial. But for those people, they will always have high blood cholesterol levels. And that's when we use medications to lower their cholesterol levels and help protect them against heart disease. And my complete roadmap that goes through everything, including diet and exercise, to help keep you as healthy as possible for as long as possible, can be found in the link in the pinned comment. And make sure to check out this next video here on caffeine that gives further benefits to preventing heart disease.